I remember as like a little girl, I was super, super tomboy, super, super like athletic. I was that girl that like was playing tackle football with the guys at, yeah, at, at yeah. recess and everything. I remember looking at guys and I would straight up envy them. Like mm -hmm. I remember having thoughts at a young age. Like I wish I was a guy. I wish I could dress like them. I would try to emulate the way that my dad would walk, the things mm -hmm. that he would do. I thought that I was supposed to be a boy because that's yeah. what my heart longed for, you know, because I would pay attention to the things that other guys would do. Like I recognized that they liked girls. So then that seed started to be planted mm -hmm. in my heart of like, okay, I guess guys like girls. I remember having conversations with the Lord as young as eight years old bro. saying God like I know this is wrong but I feel like this is just how I was made I remember crying out to him like why do I feel this way you know wow. I had tried following him at 16 and 17 years old I would weep in my restroom in my bedroom at night and be like Lord I want to love you but I feel like I can't I'm going through anguish over here so much depression so much anxiety I had reaped the death of sin and I was like everything that I thought I wanted isn't what I really wanted what's going on guys I'm here right now with a very special guests i know it's been a while since i did a podcast interview but you know the lord really put it on my heart to share this powerful testimony that you're going to hear today i still haven't really heard it in its entirety and i did that on purpose so you guys can get a real authentic reaction because this isn't scripted we're not actors we're servants of jesus christ amen so i have mallory garza with me here today it's an honor to have you thank you bro like we talked earlier or yesterday Man, I was just so excited. This is definitely an open door from the Lord. I tried filming my testimony for my own YouTube the other day, and he told me to wait. And then you called. So wow. definitely wow. a divine appointment here. Praise God. Yeah, I actually received a vision. And I'm very careful about saying that I received visions, right? Um, you don't know what kind of vision you're getting. I'm not saying that to be religious, to be yeah. a Pharisee. But everyone is like a, a prophet these days. They yeah. have visions, but it doesn't really line up with the Word of God. Mm -hmm. I actually got this vision twice to do this video with you. And... Um, Usually, if the Lord gives me a vision and then I forget about it or shrug it off, he'll remind me again, you know, because the Holy Spirit is a reminder. The Holy Spirit yeah. reminds us what's already in his word. So the nature of the Holy Spirit, the part of the triune Godhead is to essentially remind us, you know, keep us in check like, hey, mm -hmm. I told you to do this. Yeah. What's going on? Yeah. So I received this vision twice that I was going to do this podcast with Mallory and the second time I'm like all right Lord my bad like I'm tripping <laughs> I gotta get this done so I already know people are gonna be edified yeah. people are gonna be transformed God. because it's not anything we do it's mm -hmm. the gospel of Jesus Christ that has Absolutely. the power to transform yeah. lives so before we get into this interview today um, if you guys like Christian content you guys like podcasts like this or just anything that glorifies Jesus Christ Give this video a like, subscribe to my channel down below if you are new, and turn on my post notifications so you never miss a new video. Now, with that being said, Mallory, let's get right into it. So you have a powerful testimony, and I guess my first question for you is, like, what did your relationship with Jesus look like growing up? Were you raised in the church at all? What's up with that? Yeah, so my story literally starts when I was born. <laughs> like, uh, I'm sure a lot of people may hear people in the LGBTQ community or uh, make the comment that they were born gay or they were born, you know, with gender confusion. Um, that's something that I completely have compassion for people on because before I could even remember or process things before I had vocabulary to any of these things, I remember as like a little girl, I was super, super tomboy, super, super like athletic. I was that girl that like was playing like tackle football with the guys at, yeah, at, at yeah. recess and everything. So I was just, you know, the type of person I was. And I remember looking at guys and I would straight up envy them like mm -hmm. I remember having thoughts at a young age like I wish I was a guy I wish I could dress like them you know wow. um like I said I would look at other l little guys older older men and I would envy them I would try to emulate it like like kind of, sounds kind of crazy but I would try to emulate the way that my dad would walk the things mm -hmm. that he would do I would also grow up like hunting and fishing with him and stuff mm -hmm. um and so again not even having vocabulary for gender confusion or homosexuality or whatever it's just I I thought that I was supposed to be a boy because that's yeah. what my heart longed for, you know? And what's crazy is like, it wasn't even something that was just in my head. It was actually manifesting um, in the physical because there's this funny story, uh, not funny, I don't remember this, but my parents told me. I was a, a kid, we grew up in church, like a Pentecostal church, so it was super, super religious. Yeah, yeah. Um, but we were having like a Christmas play and the kids were playing the characters or whatever. And I was four years old. I was playing Mary. One of my like guy friends growing up was playing Joseph. Before the play started, my parents told me I started throwing a tantrum and I threw baby Jesus across the room, bro. And I was like, I don't want to play Mary. I want to play Joseph. Wow. So it's like at a young age, before I can even comprehend these things, the 
you know, gender confusion, the desire to be of a different gender was already surfacing. Um, and then, like I said, because I would pay attention to the things that little boys or other guys would do, like I recognized that they liked girls. So then that seed started to be pl- planted mm. in my heart of like, okay, I guess guys like girls, you know? Mm-hmm. But even then I was like four or five years old. What do you know about that? Right, like, right. Um, I'm just trying to have fun. Mm-hmm. But then at the age of six, that's when I start getting introduced. Uh, keep in mind, too, I'm in church this whole time. My parents were yeah. in church probably up until, like, the age of me being, like, 10 years old. So I grew up hearing about Jesus. Like, mm-hmm. I loved him. There's photos. I can even send you them, bro, of me, like, on the cover of the church magazine or pamphlet, praising the Lord with yeah, all yeah. my heart, bro. Like, I loved him. Um, and that. But like I said, I'm struggling with all of this like internal stuff. I was even like considered the black sheep of the family, bro. Like everyone called me the problem kid, the bad kid, which mm-hmm. is hilarious looking back on because my name like literally has a word mal in it, which in every language <laughs> means bad. So like I joke with my parents like, bro, y'all spoke this yeah. over me. <laughs> That's hilarious, bro. <laughs> so like, I was always a bad kid, always a headache. Like uh, my family and I still joke about it. If, if I was hanging around with my cousins, someone was always getting hurt. Like yeah. I just felt like I didn't have control over over like me just causing destruction which is Mm -hmm. like crazy looking back on but anyways so I'm like growing up in the church and around six years old uh that's when I have an older cousin just a few years older me who's of the same gender start playing games with me coming Mm. in the name of let's play doctor let's play house Mm. and unfortunately a lot of people know what I'm talking about when I say this Mm -hmm. a lot of people you know may hear this and they think that oh it's it's not like that's crazy but the number one lie the enemy is going to try to keep people bound to is that you're the only one that's gone through this. And that's what keeps us bound in so much shame. So my cousin started coming in these names of, again, playing games, but then started turning into sexual abuse, started Mm. showing me and introducing me to lesbian pornography at the age of, I don't know if I should say corn, considering this is on YouTube. It's all good. It's all good. I can even believe that if I need to. More editing for me, but that's okay. Just kidding. It's okay. The grace of God's over here. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. But yeah, started introducing me to that stuff at the age of six, bro. So I got hooked on pornography what? at six. Yeah. And it was just like on her mom's laptop and everything. And then I got a phone at seven years old because, you know, my parents had to like check in when to pick me up from school and everything. Um, so that was also an outlet for me. But um, so this cousin, again, female, a few years older than me, st- was started as sexual abuse. But if I'm being completely honest, it started to turn into what we would call like consensual stuff, you mm-hmm. know, or legally what they would call it is like cousin experimentation which is yeah. crazy thinking about but like that's the reality that I was living in yeah um and that's what like I, I would say like fully watered the seeds of like homosexuality and gender confusion that wow. I had at a young age because bro I remember again I know Jesus I pray like I'm that kid that's winning all of the like games at kingdom kids like mm-hmm. the, the the youth service stuff like yeah. I was all about it so I would like pray to the Lord and I knew this stuff was wrong because again I'm going to a Pentecostal church and praise God they preach truth sometimes in a little bit too much of a condemning way yeah but uh I knew like you know liking girls was wrong I knew that uh you know I was supposed to be a girl because my 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 parents like they would always encourage me to try to do you know girly girly things wear yeah. girly clothes and stuff um but I remember having conversations with the Lord as young as eight years old, bro. And Mm -hmm. I was like laying in bed saying, God, like, I know this is wrong, but I feel like this is just how I was made. Like, I'm sorry. I remember crying out to him. Like, why do I feel this way? You know, and having conversations with him saying like, when I turn 18, I'm just going to have to like move away from my parents because they don't accept this lifestyle and I'm going to live the way that I want to live. Like, it's crazy that at the ages of like six, eight, nine, ten, like, I was praying stuff like that, you know what I mean? Which makes sense why I was such a bad kid because I'm struggling with all this internal shame and guilt and and weight. You know, like I said, the enemy's biggest lie when people go through any sort of like a child abuse or maybe even like experimentation with other people because it didn't stop at my cousin. Like Mm -hmm. that just planted the seed and I started messing around with other kids at like my school and stuff, Mm -hmm. specifically specifically girls. Mm -hmm. Um, But again, like his tactic was just to bound me in shame yeah. and keep everything in the dark that's right. one thing that my mom always said and it, i hated it growing up she said everything you do in the dark is going to come out in the light and man <laughs> she was prophesying bro because i got on. caught with everything except yeah. for the cousin thing but like at the age of eight years old i got caught with with, with uh porn mm-hmm. and praise god like that's one thing i it, encourage parents with every day is like stay hyperly vigilant and like involved with your kid's life because yeah. if my mom didn't if, if it wasn't for the discernment of a mom bro i would have gone down such a like much darker path you know what I mean yeah. if if the Lord didn't allow my parents to like sever that head immediately you know yeah. or at least like start to bring things in the light so yeah like I said I was uh started messing around with like um other girls and everything full-on living like 
a closeted lifestyle, so to speak, from the ages of like six to ten. Um, and that's like I said, we'd been going to church and everything. But what's interesting about all this is when I around like the age of 10 or 11, when I started going to a new school, um, this is when I started going through puberty. I remember, bro, going into sixth grade, this guy walked into class, and I had the biggest crush on him. I was like, praise God. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> I'm like, I like guys. That's you know? hilarious. But what's, what a lot of people, they, they perceive the gospel as that, or some people even preach the gospel as that, of like the goal is heterosexuality, but yeah. the goal isn't. The goal yeah. is to have a relationship with Jesus mm -hmm. because the reality is like, yes, I had like discovered a, a uh, an attraction to guys but i was still putting a sorry i was still putting like a band-aid on an open wound you know yeah yeah like the reality is it wasn't about me being attracted to the same sex opposite sex it was my heart was longing to be loved and i wanted yeah. to be accepted so bad because again mm. i'm being rejected my whole life like yeah. i wasn't girl enough for the girls i wasn't a boy to like go be with the boys you know what i mean like yeah. i was a black sheep of the family all i was longing for was acceptance and i was trying to find it in any way that I could, whether that be with girls, sports, guys, whatever it was. Um, but now, obviously, looking back, I realize what I was really longing for was Jesus. You know, wow. I just didn't know how to get there. Um, but with that said, like, I made the, made the switch, so to speak. But the thing is, the, the same-sex attraction didn't go away. Like, yeah. I was still struggling with that um, in, like, middle school and high school. But, like I said, it just kind of flipped, putting a Band-Aid over an open wound, where I went from, like, girl crazy to boy crazy. And, um, again, like, going through the typical, like, teenage girl of trying to find validation from guys and everything, uh, seeking their approval from, you know, my body. Uh, my looks my personality all that sort of stuff um and I want to say around like 14 that's when sports started getting introduced so a lot of people that may not know me like I I can compete in, uh, in the sport of weightlifting we've talked about she's it. she's like, jacked <laughs> she's probably the only woman that I've met where I'm like I don't want to do an arm wrestle with you because I'm gonna lose and oh that'll be gosh. embarrassing so yeah. <laughs> yeah that's why I've never brought up arm wrestling right you know and I probably never will but <laughs> dude it's just such a big part of my life man like it started around the same age like uh when I started going through puberty I hated how skinny I was bro mm -hmm. like I've been this height since sen like 10 years old so mm -hmm. I was like stretched yeah and I was like I need to go <laughs> to the gym I do yeah I started playing basketball basketball and like after school every day I'd still go to a global gym and start lifting weights so mm -hmm. it was really cool like around the age of eight or 14 that's when I get introduced to the sport of CrossFit and then mm -hmm. that turns into weightlifting and I became so obsessed bro again it was great I thank God because me being so hyperly fixated on becoming the best athlete that I could be it kept me out of a lot of trouble honestly yeah. like um I I wasn't drinking I wasn't partying I wasn't smoking like it even limited the time that I was hanging around people um but again, putting a, a bandaid on like an open wound because right. what started to happen was I was trying to find my identity and my athletic successes mm. and I was finding my worth and validation and how I was competing as an athlete. Um, and uh, I realized the question you asked was about like, if you grew up in the church and this is already turning into like a whole testimony. No, do it, do it. This <laughs> yeah. is great. This is the Holy yeah, Spirit. Yeah, yeah. God will get, always direct our conversations like, in the way that we don't frame it Amen. essentially, you yeah, know, yeah. so keep going. It goes along too with the whole thing. Like really this whole, this whole time, like my parents were going in and out of church because the, the Pentecostal church that, that we grew up in or I grew up in, um, it, it kind of like crashed and burned. You know what I mean? We experienced some church hurt. Um, so my parents were like kind of going back and forth, but thank God my parents still raised me in conservative Christian values. Yeah. And that's something that like I can probably get into later if the spirit leads. But uh, my parents weren't perfect by any means. Like mm -hmm. they weren't sure what to do a lot of the time because like right. I said, I was a problem kid. Right, right. But um, again, thank God they raised me on conservative values, yeah. like encouraging and even like planting seeds of life and truth of the fact like, no, you're a girl. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, like, yeah, like, yeah. Um, and yeah, that because – man it just breaks my heart seeing kids that are like are grown up in the agenda and the culture that we're in today because it's encouraging them to walk out a life that isn't in god's will right but we can get in that uh, later on but ba yeah, yeah. basically uh, like i was saying at 14 um started getting into sports started finding my identity in that and everything um and then that led to like me going full force like i started making team usa for olympic weightlifting and traveling the world and it's really cool looking back on because like I didn't know at 19 years old, that's how the Lord is going to start my ministry. Mm -hmm. So it's crazy how like, even when we're running away from God, even when we're being disobedient to him, he still orchestrates our steps, you right. know, super, right. super cool. But, uh, during that time around say like 16, that's when I started getting like my first long-term relationship, um, with a guy. And so yeah. again, like deep down, still struggling with like the attraction to girls. But what's interesting is like when I went through like the whole puberty, like switch, like switch and then started gaining an attraction for guys, um, the, the attraction to homosexuality started to lose a grip on me, meaning like I didn't 
want to do it, but the thought would still come in my head all the time yeah. of like I'm attracted to that girl. Da, da, da. Like, mm-hmm. and what I realize now, looking back, is it really is a spirit. It you know is what a I mean? spirit. Yeah. And and the fact that I went through puberty and like I mm-hmm. aligned with like the biblically correct form of you know romantic love which it was still perverted because i was yeah. trying to find you know uh, right. love in someone other than like my husband but right and i didn't know jesus but um that's why i'm so against the demonic agenda of like getting kids on puberty blockers because yeah. i believe the lord uh like sets up puberty to kind of like set us on the right track so mm-hmm. to speak mm-hmm. um but like i said it was still a voice that i was hearing um but i i just like it just seemed more acceptable to be in like a heterosexual relationship and stuff. And that's what I was like, um, attracted to and everything. So that's what I was in, um, fornicating, living in sin, bro. Like may I looked like a good kid on the outside cause I wasn't partying, drinking. I was very successful as an athlete, but I was living in sin and I was a lukewarm Christian. American per- Christianity. Exactly. Christian <laughs> culture. Yeah. Um, and what's crazy is like this whole time I'm bought into the lie of like, um, oh god like understands he wouldn't ask us in this day and age to like wait for marriage and everything it's so demonic wow um but what's crazy is like even in the midst of all of that there was two instances specifically when i was like 16 and when i was 17 years old when i tried coming back to the lord like i remember feeling the holy spirit like having encounters with him having a fire like a like i wouldn't say like a fire but like a realization of like, Lord, I need you because I started to realize like this sin has such a grip on me and it only fills me temporarily. But when I would come to the Lord, I wouldn't be diligent with like seeking him. And then I would backslide. I'd go back to the same sin. And I think a big part of that too, was I was lacking Christian fellowship and Christian community. Um, one of my favorite verses, uh, is in first John one seven. It says like, if we walk in the light as he is in the light, like my mom always said, keep things in the light. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, you walk in fellowship with one another through the blood of Jesus. We're cleansed from all sins, but Mm -hmm. I was lacking the fellowship. And so I believe that was like a big reason why I kept backsliding. Um, and part of it too was because I was coming to God with an agenda. Those Mm -hmm. two times that I, I was come to him. I was like, Lord, like basically asking him to free me from like my desires. Um, uh, free me from like the consequences of sin basically mm-hmm. like i still wanted to do what i wanted to do yeah yeah but fast forward like when i was 19 or i'll backtrack a little bit like well, i moved to north carolina for a uh, for college and everything again living in sin um and again praise god for the discernment of a mom she felt it really heavy on my heart uh on her heart to bring me back home she didn't know that the whole year previous i was debating suicide wow. every single day because wow. the reality is like the the consequences of sin the bible says is death and yeah. it was catching up to me like yeah. all of those years of me sowing what i wanted to do all sowing that sin uh it caught up to me and i was i was depressed i was anxious i was suicidal like i didn't think my life was worth anything like the only thing that stopped me from doing it honestly um, wasn't the fact of like how it would affect my parents. It was the fear of hell being real. If I'm being completely honest. Wow. <laughs> wow. So praise God for honestly, like, honestly praise God for that because yes. I feel like and this is what's very dangerous mm-hmm. is like you have people now who are teaching and this is kind of a controversial subject, yeah. but if you commit suicide, you won't go to hell. Yeah. But I, I don't know. I, I, I really believe like if you do, you know, off yourself, like you technically committed murder. Yep. Unrepentant. Yeah. You know, so like that's always been something that I've seen where people like try to kind of be more soft about it. It's mm-hmm. like, oh, I don't know if, you know, no, like if you commit suicide, you won't go to hell. Yeah. But it's like I I disagree with yeah. that, you know, and yeah. I think it's powerful that you knew that deep down mm-hmm. because that was able to save you from an eternal yeah. realm of despair and suffering. Yeah. So that needs to be taught more. It's a touchy subject because, you know, people have family members who have done that. Yeah. And like, it sucks to think about, dang, are they in right. hell because they committed suicide? You know? And it's like, I personally believe that, yeah, that's where you do go there. If right. you commit that action. Yeah. And for me, like, it wasn't even that, like, I didn't know people called it like the, the damnable sin or whatever they call yeah, it. Yeah. Um, yeah. But, like, it would send you straight to hell. I just knew I wasn't right with God. Yeah, So, literally, I remember having conversations of, like, I'm living in sin right now. Like, I have a free ticket to hell. Yeah, (laughs) yeah, literally, yeah. And if I off myself, like, like, again, the possibility of of, of hell being real. Because even though I wasn't being obedient to Jesus, even though I wasn't following him, I always knew him to be real. Yeah. Like, I, I grew up around the church. Like, even though my parents weren't perfect... We still prayed. We still talked about Jesus here and there. You yeah. know what I mean? So encouragement to the parents who think that, like, they're not doing anything. Right. Keep planting those seeds of truth because yeah. you have no idea how it could save your kid's life. Right. I was in college, and it stopped me from committing suicide because wow. of all those seeds of the gospel growing up. Um, 
But yeah, like my mom didn't know I was struggling uh, with suicidal ideation uh, for the whole year previous. And she was like, it's time to come home. And I'm in this long term relationship uh, that I was like going in and out of and, and whatever. But I, dude, I can't explain it because I can't tell you an exact time period of like when I was filled with the Holy Spirit, when I was saved. I think that's even like a silly question to ask. Like we mm-hmm. shouldn't be worried about if we're making it to heaven. That's milk stuff, bro. Right, Have right. faith in the gospel and trust in the sanctification process. Yeah. And don't be so concerned with your salvation. Be concerned with other people's salvation. Exactly. And like trying to win souls for the kingdom. You know what right, I mean? Right, right, right. Um, Come on. But anyways. <laughs> that Pentecostal rising up right now. <laughs> but I start praying to this very right hallelujah. <laughs> um, that's even how the school is here at LCU. It's hilarious. Amen. But anyways, um, so I forgot where we were at. What was it? <laughs> no, yeah. Basically, you were talking about how it's it's kind of like being on the milk, worrying about your own Oh, right. I, I couldn't tell you when others. I was filled with the spirit. I couldn't tell you uh, any of this, but... Because I say this because when my mom said it was time to go back home, bro, in my flesh, I was so upset. I was angry because I'm like, I'm, I'm going to be away from my boyfriend at the time. Obviously, mm-hmm. that's way in the past. But like, right, right, right. <laughs> I'm away from my boyfriend. Like, I'm not going to be able to do things that I want to do. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm going to be under the same roof with my parents again. Like, um, what does it have to do with weightlifting? Like, this is the, all the thoughts that are going through my mind. Yeah. But in my spirit, bro, like... I was so relieved because, again, looking back on, I can see and recognize that I was crying out to the Lord. Like I said, I had tried calling, like tried following him at 16 and 17 years old. And I remember when I, every time I kept backsliding, I would weep in my restroom, in my bedroom at night and be like, Lord, I want to be with you. Yeah. Like, I want to love you, but I feel like I can't. It felt like there was literal change dragging me to the pornography because I got hooked at six years old, bro. Wow. I was still addicted to it this whole time. I had change dragging me to the fornication. Now, that's not taken away from the fact that I was still making the choice to do it. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? That's not me blaming demons or yeah, anything. Yeah, yeah, I was yeah, still yeah. giving them right to basically have authority over me. Right. But, um, and, and again, that was still like desires of my heart that I hadn't turned over to the Lord. But, um, bro, my soul like was just so relieved because, again, I'm going through anguish over here like in college in North Carolina, um, so much depression, so much anxiety. Um, and when my mom called me home, it's so funny looking back on, cause again, I was sad. Like I would cry here and there, but I was just relieved. I felt like I'd come to the end of my own strength. You know what I mean? Wow. I couldn't do anything on my own. Um, and my parents moved me back. And I believe that's what started like the sanctification process because I was separated from what was allowing me to live in sin before, mm. you know? Um, and so like, I wasn't able to fornicate. Like I started getting convicted again. Cause I know, I know my mom was praying. She yeah, may, yeah. she may have been missing some pieces, you know what I mean? But she was praying. I Amen. know she was. Um, and I started getting convicted again. They started dragging me to church again. And like literally, I'm pretty sure the I remember the first servant I went back to was talking about like uh sex sex before marriage and, and homosexuality. I was <laughs> how, like, how timely, dude! I know. <laughs> I remember like like ugh, trying to zone out, but like yeah. the spirit was just tugging on me, man. And wow. I'm so grateful because like I mentioned the prayers of me calling out to him all those times, like. Dude, none of those went unheard. Like yeah. he heard every single one, and he was faithful to answer it. You know, there was yeah. some bumps and bumps in the wor- uh, in the road for sure. But when I came back home, it was like this three month period of me essentially wrestling with God. Like, yeah, um, I don't know if you know the story of like Jacob in, in the Old Testament, yeah, yeah where yeah, he was yeah. like wrestling with the Spirit of the Lord, and that's definitely what it was. And what's crazy is like I used to say the Lord like put me in a chokehold, <laughs> and then like I like tapped out. You know what I mean? That's hilarious. But now I recognize the reality of it was the Lord was embracing me in a hug Mm. and I was trying to fight against it because I'm over here. Like the only form of love that I was used to was the temporary love, Mm -hmm. which is lust, perverted love from pornography, relationships, friendships, weightlifting, you know what I mean? But I was, I was trying to fight out of it to the point where for the first time I was injured in like three different parts of my body at this point and weightlifting. So the Lord stripped that idol out of my life. He stripped the boyfriend, you know what I mean? We Mm -hmm. were still together, but long distance. Um, He was stripping me. Mm -hmm. completely and like i thought i was depressed in north carolina i got so much more depressed uh and when i moved back home to texas um and do like like i said three months of wrestling and then i got to the point where i was i was starting to like get back in the word i was starting to pray you know like i I didn't know what to do i didn't have like my my tongues at the time i I thought that stuff was Bull crap, honestly, because yeah, 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 like, yeah. <laughs> I'm still wrestling with a lot of like religion or whatever. Yeah. Um. And I again, I wanted to live the way that I wanted to live, but I remember praying little prayers like, like, I was like, Lord, I want you, like, actually now, like, yeah. please take anybody and anything out actually of my life. Now. Yeah. Right. Like, like no, for real. You know, yeah. Seriously. Like God, the other times I was capital, right. but God, <laughs> because I had come to the end of myself. Like, yeah. really, the reality is, like, I had reaped 
or I like reaped the death of sin. And mm. I was like, everything that I thought I wanted isn't what I really wanted. Yeah. Like, again, I thought that, that I was like searching for any form of love and acceptance that I can get from anything. But the whole time I was longing for Jesus, but mm-hmm. like the enemy is going to, going to introduce us to perverted forms of it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Hey, this and this, and it's so deceiving because it does fulfill you for a season. Yeah. I was living on top of the world when I was fornicating, mm-hmm. when I was doing my best in weightlifting, you know right. what I mean? But it all, like it leaves you more broken, depressed, like feeling f- like filthy and more ashamed than ever. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and keep in mind this whole time too, I'm still wrestling with the shame of what I've like everything that I did as a kid. Mm-hmm. Cause I hadn't opened up about any of that stuff. You know what I mean? Really? Until, yeah. Until I'd moved back to Texas for my parents. And that's when like the spirit was finally leading me to like open up about the abuse, about like the things that I was doing as a kid, how early I was actually introduced to pornography and stuff. Um, and so again, like that was that sanctification process kind of for like those three months. Um, but like I was saying before, like I remember praying prayers, like, Lord, please remove anybody out of my life that doesn't need to be here. Bro, the next day, me and my boyfriend started breaking up. Like, it started the wow. breakup process. <laughs> yeah. 24 hour express delivery, bro. Wow. So, like, <laughs> like, <laughs> like, you got expedited shipping. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> like, anybody who feels stuck, just ask the Lord to start removing people and things out of your life that don't allow you to get closer to Him. He Amen. was so quick to deliver. But again, I was still trying to hold on to my old life. So, I was like holding on to this toxic relationship. Um, but even in the midst of like this wrestling, it got to the point where like I found myself some Christian fellowship like I'd mentioned before like the I believe the past couple times I backslid was because I didn't have fellowship there wasn't accountability yeah. there wasn't like like faith essentially feeds off of each other you know mm-hmm. what I mean fellowship's important mm-hmm. um but I found that fellowship at UTSA that's a college I was going to at the time um and we had this like a uh, like weekend um I guess like revival thing or whatever um and I was in like a small group we all went together um and it, I came fully, fully to the end of myself where like the toxic relationship got so bad. I wasn't eating at all. I had lost like five kilos and weightlifting. We talk kilos. So that's like right. 10, 12 pounds. Yeah. That's how much I wasn't eating. Cause I was so depressed. Wow. Yeah. And, and I went through the whole girl thing where like I chopped my hair off. Cause I was like, you know, super sad and everything. Did you diet too? Heck, no. no so my, you didn't go that yeah, far. No, 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 no. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, you were yeah. halfway there. Yeah. Right. Cause first you chop off the hair, then you dye it like <laughs> blue or pink or something. You know, I don't think I, Again, I grew up with conservative parents, bro. Amen, they drilled amen. in. Yeah, no the conservatism drinking. removes any hair dye. Yes, you know? no hair dye, no drinking, no smoking, amen. like uh, no sex before marriage. Obviously, that didn't work. But yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> but um, anyways, um, like we were at this like church conference or whatever, and like I said, I I, I was reaping death, bro. Like I was still suicidal, so suicidal at this point. And that's that. I'm still like getting back into prayer, but in the word, I almost got in a car accident the week before that almost had me drove over the, like the highway. Like death was coming what? after me, dude. Um, and I got to this like weekend, uh, you know, church, whatever, or whatever it was called. It's called breakaway. Um, and I remember like, uh, before Saturday night, I heard the Lord speak to me. Um, he said, your freedom comes when you lay it at the altar. And I got visions of like the relationship that I was still holding on to. And although I wasn't like addicted to, uh, to pornography at the time, meaning like websites, yeah. it was like videos of me and my ex mm-hmm. dude, like it had a grip on me. Like, wow. and I was living in imagination fantasy land constantly. Yeah. So like, I couldn't even think about God when I tried to, and that's yeah. like a whole other su- subject, you know, that we can go on yeah, to like, yeah, yeah. how the enemy, this is where all the warfare is, you know, and he, it's all here. Yes. Yeah. And he yeah. was just like enticing me with like a uh, vain imaginations, you know what I mean? So that I couldn't keep my focus and my, my, my sight on the Lord. But anyways, like he told me your freedom comes when you lay it at the altar. So I was like, I, I, I can't do it anymore without you, Lord. You know yeah. what I mean? So I deleted all the videos. I texted the, the ex-boyfriend. I was like, Hey, we're done, done. Like, yeah. like no more. <laughs> yeah. And dude, like the worship started immediately. I go to the aisle, I get on my knees and I don't know what happened, but two hours later, like, I, I didn't believe in tongues at the time. I started speaking to something that sounded Mandarin. Like yeah. <laughs> during this two hour period, it was just flowing out. You know what I mean? Like I'm bawling my eyes out. I'm on my knees the whole time. I didn't realize it was two hours. Like worship ended up going from three hours to like extending this whole thing. Cause the spirit was just moving. You know? Yeah. 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 Um, I end up being born again. And I realize wow. that now because like when I looked up, bro, I have my glasses. So like my, my, uh, I came up and, I thought I went blind for a second because yeah, my yeah. tears were covering yeah. like, the things. <laughs> but I took it off, bro. I kid you not. I was so depressed before. Like, I started to see life in black and white. And then when I opened my eyes after that born again experience, the light seemed so much brighter. Like, I saw so blue true. for the first time. Like, green. Like, I just, everything was so much more vibrant. And I was like. That's so true. Yes. Because 
when I got saved and I went back home to San Diego yeah. where my family lives and I was looking at the nature, I saw it so vividly, yes, yes. so saturated. And it's like the spirit of God in me was like, it was like God was rejoicing over his own creation yep. within me. Like I could literally see like through the lens of God the beauty of everything he's made, mm -hmm. which is so crazy because it's like we live in, in a on a planet with oceans and beautiful skies and beautiful nature. And like we look at it and we're like, oh, that's cool. But we don't actually if we don't know who made it. Yeah, it's hard for us to like give glory to the one who created right, it. Exactly. And so. Like, I just started to feel God's presence way yeah. more in exactly the way that you described by seeing everything, like, so much more colorized mm -hmm. and saturated. It's it's yeah. absolutely beautiful. But, yeah, continue. Yeah. I just wanted to mention no, that. No, dude, it is because that's what I that's what I was living out. I was like, holy crap. Like, I was, it was just, it was amazing. But what's crazy, too, probably the thing that stood out to me the most during that whole experience, because, again, it was two hours. Like, I tried getting up, and I fell on my face because my <laughs> legs were numb from being on my knees yeah, the whole yeah, time. Yeah. <laughs> but, but... Dude, oh my gosh, it's crazy looking back on, uh, because again, I struggled with loneliness and rejection so much my whole life. Like when I was a kid going through like the sexual abuse, going through like messing around with other, with other girls, like, um, just keeping everything in, in the dark. I was still, sh uh, struggling with like same sex attraction this whole time, like, uh, everything, but the Lord began to take me through all of these memories, like of me as a kid, when I would cry out to him, when I was six, eight, nine years old, like, Lord, why is this happening alone in my room? Um, he'd take me through memories of when I, I felt like an outcast at school. Cause I, I got made fun of a lot. Praise yeah. God. Now my skin's real tough because of it. Amen, you know? amen. So, like, <laughs> on Instagram, don't even bother amen, me. Amen. But, but, but he took me through all those memories of like when it was hard and I was struggling so much, uh, when I was in North Carolina, like crying on the bathroom floor, uh, crying out to the Lord or not even to the Lord, just crying. Cause I felt so alone. Um, he took me through like these flashes of memories and he showed me where he specifically was in those room and mm. that in the room every time. Wow. So it was like supernaturally over that two hour, like, you know, time period, I was freed from all of the shame, all of the guilt, all of the hurt from my past, like from as a kid to now where I realized I had the revelation of, you know, God isn't some sick God that allowed that to happen. He was hurting with me through mm. it. You know what I mean? He was angry about it, but he was still faithful to answer the prayers of my parents, the prayers of my old pastors, the prayers of even me, like crying out to the Lord, even my weeping. Romans talks about, I, I believe it's talking specifically about tongues, but even the groanings of someone, mm -hmm. the Holy Spirit interprets that on the prayers for the Father. You know right, what I mean? Right, 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 right. Um, and I just had this revelation in that moment of like, oh my gosh, I'm over here thinking I'm a victim my whole life. But the reality is like, yeah, I went through hard stuff, but the Lord was with me through the whole time. Yeah. He's Emmanuel. Like it was yeah. God with me, bro. Right, like right. I had the experiential revelation and knowledge of like who God really was in my life. And I, I tasted and saw like how good he really was. Cause that whole experience, bro, I got high off the Holy ghost. Like, Come you know on. what I mean? And so it's like that time I got hooked like I've yeah. always had an addictive personality that's why I was able to go like as far as I have been with weightlifting yeah um that's why I was living in as deep a sin as yeah, I was yeah, because yeah. I get addicted right. but I got hooked and addicted on the Holy Spirit at that point I got addicted to Jesus and like addicted to his goodness because I yeah. realized like man I thought I was alone this whole time when everyone else seemed to leave me even when my parents are getting frustrated with me and your parents are the ones who are supposed to like keep you closest in, in life mm -hmm. the Lord was the one that was really there with me the whole time you wow. know um King but, David says too yeah. in the book of Psalms although my you know father and mother forsake me you know the lord is still with yes. me so it's like it's such a comforting feeling to know that like we really do have a legitimate dad dude like like in the heavens <laughs> you know and it's like wait he's actually my dad yes. like so we actually have the same dad yep Capital so D, we, got we might blood, actually bro. be related bruh Let's go. Amen. <laughs> Come on. Dude, I say all the time, he's such a good dad. Amen. He's such a good dad, bro. Like, he never left me. And and that's, like, I believe what, what allowed all of that to happen was, like I mentioned the two previous times, I was coming to the Lord with an agenda. Like, Lord, take this away, take this away. But I really just wanted to feel peace without yeah. actually surrendering to the Prince of Peace. But this time, I came to the Lord with no agenda. And I was like, Lord, I'm broken. 
I need you. I didn't come to him with take away these homosexual desires, take away uh, my desire to fornicate, take away like the addiction, whatever. I surrendered myself to him and recognized you created me. I made for you. I want you. Mm. And everything started to flow from that. I, I was born again, got like, uh, again, I didn't believe in tongues, started happening. And then what's crazy too, I had sisters that I started prophesying over. I didn't even know what prophesy what yeah, prophesying yeah. was. It was crazy. Like things just started pouring out. Um, and then like it was from that day, from my experience, I no longer heard that homosexual voice. Maybe a couple times, but I was like, the devil's a liar, bro. I'm yeah, born yeah, again. Yeah. You know Come what I mean? On. I'm a new creature. Even when he would try to entice me with like pornography, with um, with like going back to the ex, going back to guys, whatever. I was like, the devil's a liar, bro. Yeah, like yeah. I literally been born again. First Corinthians talks about how we're new creatures, you know? And that's a whole conversation we can get into. But like, it's about a fight of faith. Like I was like fighting the fight of faith and the fact that I was born again, I received a new heart and everything. So I wasn't going to let the enemy drive me back. Like he did those two times where I backslid again. Right. Right. Um, but yeah, I just, I fully surrendered to the Lord. Like I said, I didn't come with an agenda. Uh, but because I got addicted from him at that moment, I realized like, I want, I love Jesus and I want more of him. All the other enti- like desires started to fade away. Yeah. Like I, I, I can confidently say now I don't have the desire to have sex before marriage. Yeah. I, I haven't gone back to fornication, uh, pornography. Uh, Amen. Even, I, I was set free from depression, anxiety that day. Yeah. Like, and that doesn't mean again, that doesn't mean that I don't feel sad at times. It doesn't mean right, I don't right. feel anxious at times, right. but I choose to identify with who the Lord says that I am. Exactly. You know? And it's through having faith in the word of God and the, 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 infallibility of his word the truth of it over my own feelings and my own thoughts he started to take me through what we know as like the sanctification journey where like he started to grow me in more of a femininity because again I like growing up I still struggle with the whole like I want to be a guy but I'm like very tomboy but even now like the I am confident in the femininity that the Lord has me walking in and I'm I'm proud to be a Amen. woman of God. You Amen. know what I mean? Which is Come crazy because as a kid, I, I thought being a girl was weak. Yeah. But then the Lord takes me through scripture like, nah, woman of God, we're bold, we're powerful. Right, you right. know what I mean? We, right. we talk loud. You know? <laughs> <laughs> we got a message to speak. Look yeah, at Deborah, yeah. you know? Um, but like, I don't fit the typical mold of what a lot of people in the church especially would deem feminine. Yeah. But like this is the, the 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 place that the Lord has me on, you know what I mean? And like the sanctification process that He's brought me through, it just started to to shed off um, the sinful desires, so to speak. But right. I wasn't trying to behavior modify anything. Like I said, I tasted and saw that the Lord was truly good, and wow. I started to long for Him. And I realized I had I gained the perspective. That's what I say all the time. Like born again doesn't have to be some crazy experience. It's the Lord reveals or removes the veil off of your eyes, yeah. and you're able to have the perspective of like oh, that stuff really isn't good. It's right. maybe good temporarily, right. but the road to hell looks pretty dang good. <laughs> like, Until you're you there. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. No, that's so true. And it's so powerful that you're touching on this because a lot of people think like, oh, following God means that I have to, you know, I have to stop being, you know, uh, homosexual yeah. or whatever. And it's like, taste and see that he's good. Yep exchange your desires for his his exactly. desires and of course his word says that he desi- you know marriage is between man yeah. and a woman but when you're looking at your relationship with God don't feel like there's this disconnect because you have these desires that go against his word yeah fall in love with Jesus exactly. fall in love like receive the Holy Spirit yeah. the Holy Spirit will work on you yeah. you know because it's not even just about having same-sex attraction like all sin is sin at mm-hmm. the end of the day when I got saved and born again, I started, God's desires started being birthed within Mm -hmm. me. When I started cussing, I'm like, oh, I don't like doing that anymore. (laughs) I started, I was listening to secular music. Like I used to listen to these demonic rappers who literally rapped about Satan. Yeah. Called Suicide Boys. I remember one day. I used to listen like crazy. (laughs) That's when I started getting suicidal. That actually opened up an antichrist spirit to dwell within me because once i started listening to their music i started to really hate jesus for no reason you know i never heard about jesus christ never knew like anything about him that yeah that opened a door i started like becoming a huge mocker of the things of god and um i remember i was listening to their music after i got saved and they're like rapping like triple six we like that s word and i'm and i'm like just just born again working out and i'm like Hold on, what this is, is this? disgusting. <laughs> and I was like, I was like, no, God, forgive me, God. Yeah, I turned seriously. on worship music instead. I started hearing worship music. I'm like, hey, Amen. Right. I'm a praise the Lord. Amen. And so it's like I started getting these <laughs> desires out of nowhere, and it wasn't because. And keep in mind, I didn't have anyone tell me this was wrong. Yeah. 
I hadn't even I wasn't even well versed in the Bible at that point. Yeah. It was just the Holy Spirit. Right. The Holy Spirit's not going to contradict yeah, His Word, exactly. so that's how I knew it was God. Yeah. Because then I started reading the Word after, and I'm like, "Oh yeah, this really is You, God." Right. And I'm like, "Nah, I don't want that anymore." And it's not out of religion. It's not out of oh, like I don't want to disobey God. It's I don't want to go to hell. It's, it's like love, I bro. love You, just like yes. You said. I'm addicted to Your presence. Yes. I'm addicted to Your love. And like with me too, I had a very addictive personality. Mm-hmm. I would smoke marijuana pretty much every day. Yeah. Uh, I couldn't go a day without it or I'd be fiending. They say mm-hmm. it's not an addiction, but I'm saying cap on that because yeah. <laughs> uh, I was addicted as well yeah. as many other things too, you know, that I've shared maybe previously in my testimony. So when that addiction got directed towards the right thing, I'm like, let's go. Yes. Because I still have this personality, We're but I'm just, burning ones, exactly. Bro. I'm addicted to you, God. Like I, I want you so bad. Mm-hmm. Like there will be days where sometimes like, I'll forget to start my day off with prayer, start yeah. my day off with being in the word and it'll be like the end of the day and I'll just be addicted to yes. wake up and like get it right like this time. Itching, like, like, like yeah, longing. almost tweaking. Yes. Like, I'm tweaking to get back <laughs> in God's I, presence. That's you know? what I say to I'm like, I'm, <laughs> no, I'm, I'm like, God, when I wake up tomorrow, I'm going to put on my worship instrumental. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> no, but that's so true, man. And like, oh, I'm so, so glad you touched that on too, that. Is like, all of the things that I would go to for the world for, like, the, the temporary satisfaction, like, I would have to, like, wait on it. Like, I would have to get access to it. Bro, we always have access to the Lord. Like, you know, I don't have to wait to get high off the Holy Ghost. I don't right. have to wait to be with Him. Like, right. even when I'm not looking for Him, He's there. Think yeah. about the visions that He gave me. Like, yeah. all those moments that I thought I was alone, He was there. And one thing I didn't mention, too, I didn't know the verse at the time that He collects your tears in, like, jars, I think. Yeah. In these visions, I could see Him catching my tears. <sighs> Dude, isn't that crazy? Yeah, and that's in the Word of God. Yes, too. I didn't know that that's though. That's crazy. And I, but like the Lord like was revealing to me of not only was I just there, I'm not some like mean God that just allowed you to go through it, but I was hurting with you, you know, and wow. I was interceding on your behalf the whole time. And again, I didn't know Scripture at the time where it says we have a high priest who intercedes on our behalf, and so it, it was powerful, bro. But I always love touching on that is like it's not about behavior modification because even though I wasn't living in homosexuality at, in my teenage years. I was fornicating. Like you said, sin is sin. Yeah, Sexual immorality is sexual immorality, and it's all an abomination to the Lord. So the fact that, yeah, I may have been in, like, the acceptable, I I don't even necessarily like uh, using that word, but it is, like, God designed man for woman. Right. But I was still living outside of his will. I was still on my way to hell. Yeah. (laughs) Because I wasn't fully surrendered to the Lord. You know what I mean? Right, right, right. So it's not about playing the Christian role. It's like we've been talking about. You become so addicted addicted to the lord bro get hooked on his love yes and everything flows out of that love but it's also like when we talk about the sanctification process I, this you know what the lord's been taking me on the past two years now it's gonna be two years october 25th so like wow we, yeah two um, years since you got born again yeah wow yeah. really yeah no way yeah i thought you were safe for way longer <laughs> no, no no i was 19 praise I'm the lord now. praise the lord yeah, yeah. So, yeah you got like uh you kind of got fast tracked in a way. I, I like to say, uh, the Lord radically slapped me upside the head, bro. I don't know if that's because I'm like Hispanic, so you know. <laughs> <laughs> the, the Lord slapped you with the chancla. Yeah, seriously. You know, <laughs> nah, but that's so fire because, like, I know that feeling of like being saved for two years and like, y- you feel like you've been saved for twenty years. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it just goes to show you that like, the Holy Spirit is is timeless. Yeah. He's eternal. Like, yeah. I know some people who have been saved in the faith. You know, amazing you know, yeah. men and women of the Lord been saved in the faith for 20 years mm-hmm. and they just caught the sanctification right. part of it recently. Yeah. Then there's some people who have been saved for six months and God yeah. raises up to go preach to the nations. Yeah. So it's like J- Jesus said, you know, in the word of God that the first shall be last and the last mm-hmm. shall be first. And yeah. in the kingdom of God, like this realm of time, this it, it, it doesn't exist. Yeah, Obviously, you know, people who have been in the faith longer than me, I, I honor them. You know, I, uh, I, I praise them for just, you know, being in the faith for that long. They have a lot of wisdom, a lot of yeah. knowledge. But, you know, just like it says in, I believe it's First or Second Timothy, like let no one despise you as well because of your youth. You yeah. know, God is raising up a lot of people like, you know, with yeah. in our age range. Mm-hmm. You said you're 21, 21 now, right? Yeah. So I'm, I'm 26. So yeah. I'm kind of, I'm in the bracket yeah. still, you know. But it's like who who would have thought that, the generation that Satan has really preyed on the most is the one that's like breaking free and not standing for this yeah. because we're in an age and we are dealing with 
demons that not even our parents had yep. to deal with in the spirit. Yeah. Like uh, portals have been opened up at a rapid mm-hmm. rate and that's because of sin yeah. and it's because of laws being yeah. passed and yep. people don't understand like especially Christians oh, they're like, well, why do I have to care about politics? Uh, because it either opens angelic portals yep. or demonic portals. Yep. And, you know, what we saw in 2008 with, you know, Obama, um, you know, being president, essentially, he made a lot of sin that we just mentioned, mm-hmm. like legal and mainstream. And that opened up a lot of portals, you know, that opened up an even uh, bigger wave yeah. of degeneracy yeah. uh, that we've never seen in our lifetime. Yeah. And now... That's like led into the gateway of what you know the back then the crazy Christian Facebook moms warned about the slippery slope yeah. of legalizing all of yeah. these things and, and everything they, they said was right because yeah. now they're trying to make um I'm gonna try to word this in a way where I don't get flagged they're trying to make being uh, attracted to people below eighteen essentially uh, as if it's an orientation now. I just saw a video the other day of this like Democrat doctor or whatever talking about how we need to have sympathy on these people. Where did that all start? Because we opened Pandora's box essentially yeah. to degeneracy. And by opening Pandora's box, we really opened portals yeah. to ancient Babylonian yeah. demons. Yep. And so we are that generation now that has to put on the armor of God, even more armor than our parents or people before us ever did. I mean, I wasn't raised Christian, but your, your parents were, yeah. you know, but... My parents are amazing, you know, They're yeah. and they're going to know the Lord, both yeah. of them, in Jesus' Amen. name. Um, I love them. But, like, we, we're we having a – we're dealing with totally different demons, mm-hmm. right? We now have a culture that's just been completely yeah. uh, desensitized to sin on a mass mm-hmm. scale, yeah. you know, and – like, to be honest, I feel like I'm in a movie sometimes because mm-hmm. I'm like, I'm 26 years old. I don't go to the club. Like, I don't fornicate. I don't watch, you know, pornography. I haven't since I got saved. Like, I'm waiting till marriage type yeah. stuff. And I'm basically like, I'm basically like the main character yeah. in this movie. Dude, you seriously. Know? And I know like, you can testify. I've never had more fun than I have walking a pure lifestyle with the Lord. Yep. You know what I mean? Like, yep. I, I so, you know, we'll have parties i say it's like five of my friends you know yeah, what i mean yeah, at the yeah, house yeah. or whatever yeah. but like it's holy pure fun you know what i mean Wait, you have parties repent. right <laughs> repent right now no nah, bro we'd be playing jenga and amen, stuff amen. <laughs> amen. jenga do you know that's worldly no, <laughs> dude but i'm like so glad you talked t- talked on like that that because um i mean it's very um appropriate considering like elections coming up and everything right i w- i was convicted of the same thing where i was like i was honest with the lord i'm like god obviously i'll come against that homosexual devil bro. yeah because yeah, like yeah. it's a devil that's yeah. not you know but uh, but i'm like lord like where does this play a role in like politics and everything and the what he had spoken to me was the more and more that we allow things to be acceptable and praised because people are praised for it now yeah um it's it only allows people's conscience to be more and more seared so like yes. romans one talks about like uh god will essentially because he's a loving god he's, yeah. a, he's a gentleman he's not going to force you to love him yeah he's not going to force you to spend eternity with right, him. right right uh he's going to hand you off the desires of your heart if yep. that's what you want yeah and so if we know if we're in a culture that normalizes uh not just normalizes but encourages or uh a church that is too afraid to speak the truth of like the love of God, the goodness of God that yeah. leads people to repentance. You know what I mean? Yeah. Or, you know, the whole, I'm trying not to get in that subject, but, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, um, but it, it allows people's, like I said, conscience to be more seared. So it makes yeah. it more difficult and more, I'm not going to say impossible because all things are possible through the Lord. He's talking about salvation when he quotes that, but um, it makes it harder for them to fully come to the Lord or to hear his voice or to feel the tugs on their heart, you know? Um, so so true. It, it's, it, we, we have to bring it to politics, bro. We like, have to. Yeah. And people think that like politics is worldly or whatever. Obviously we don't have pastors running yeah. for president, right? Um, but we need prophets but, in government. Bro. Yeah, we need like, just because someone is not born again on fire spirit, speaking in the like praying in the holy yeah. ghost doesn't mean that god is not using them god used wicked kings mm-hmm. um in the book of daniel you know uh king nebuchadnezzar um you know king cyrus yeah. i think king cyrus was the one in daniel i'm anyways mm-hmm. i promise guys i read the bible okay <laughs> <laughs> i might just need to use google right now right. um chat gpt <laughs> right <laughs> no nah, but um but you know God is capable, and God even called like one of those wicked kings his servant. Mm-hmm. You know, so it's like, and I'm not saying like, 
well, you know, I, there are there's a lot of wickedness in yeah. politics. I'm voting for Donald Trump. Oh no, I so, was really about. I, I yeah, thought, I'm not saying this. that he's a wicked person. You know, like we're all no, no one's perfect, yeah. but um. You know, 2024, guys. Man, Get let's go. You know, it's crazy. October 1st. So one of the uh, early registration cl- closes like in a couple weeks. Amen. Get registered. Amen. Vote for Trump because Come what on. the Lord convicted me of, too, is your silence is actually signing agreement to the demonic agenda that's going to be passed through yep. if the other unnamed person yep. comes into role or comes yep. into, um, into whatever it's called, uh, presidency. I love that you brought up politics because it, now it gives me a gateway to talk about this. Right. Because <laughs> I do like talking about politics. Yeah. But – like, if you're a Christian and you seriously think that Kamala Harris is going to represent, like, the values of God, what, like, take a look at your faith. Yeah. Because this is a woman who, like, is a Marxist, who literally is a Marxist. Her dad was a Marxist. Karl Marx was a Satanist. Yeah. Karl Marx literally wrote about, like, how Lucifer's calling him home, essentially. Mm-hmm. You know, um, I was studying his book. He had a lot of satanic quotes yeah like he actually loves satan yeah so she is a open communist marxist which was birthed off of someone who loved the devil mm-hmm. right um she's all for do you remember on that debate she did with trump when trump grilled her about you know abortion on the eighth and ninth month yeah. she wouldn't answer she'd just be like come on but that was like a cop out because all if she answered that know. people would be like whoa this woman's yeah. psycho she is she that's what she wants she doesn't care like all abortion is wrong, but yeah. the eighth and ninth month especially, that's barbaric. So as a Christian, you know, if you fell into the lie of like, oh, Trump's this bigot, Trump is this, Trump is that, you have to understand that the media is the media is witchcraft, right? Um, you're watching TV on the TV channels, just like sorcerers or channelers, right? And a lot of these newscasters are witches and warlocks. Yeah. Like, they really are. Mm -hmm. They got exposed for doing rituals in Bohemian Grove. Like, they're really about that. I'm not just saying this as, like, a symbolic thing. Witches and warlocks are on your screen manipulating you because Mm -hmm. witchcraft is manipulation. And so a lot of Christians, sadly, have fallen prey to the false prophet, which is the news media. And they hate Trump for absolutely no reason. And the devil needs you to hate Trump so much that you literally vote for a woman who— like, or you just won't vote because or you again, just won't the vote. conviction from the Lord that he gave me and everyone hear this loud and clear. If you don't vote, you're signing off to whatever is going to happen. Right. I heard a, a prophecy recently say like America is going to get whatever president that they deserve. Yeah. And that's terrifying. That is terrifying. Equally encouraging at the same time. You yeah. know what I mean? Cause it's like, we got to be diligent with prayer. You know what I mean? The church yeah. needs to wake up. Yeah. I'm a, like now I, oh, man, I was like praying to the Lord before this. I was like, Lord, what is like the main thing that you want me to like, you know, really press in. And I realized why we're getting into politics now is yeah. like, my life, there's so much that you can grab from it, but my life is a living testimony to the benefits of being raised in a conservative household. Wow. Like, if it wasn't for the strict conservative values of my parents, I, I, I promise you, bro, I'd be gender fluid right now. Wow. I would be bisexual. You know what I mean? Wow. If, I ra- if I was raised in what kids are now, that's what I wouldn't be where I am today. Yeah. So I thank God for the conservative values of my parents that I was raised in and that, they, that you know, and we need to instill that in the whole country to save people's lives. Right. People in the LGBTQ, the far left, they may think that it's hate, but it's because they don't see clearly. You know right, what I mean? Right, right, right. Um, but also, too, like I look back if and again, hear this from my testimony. I can say 100 percent if I was a kid in today's age struggling with the gender confusion that I was living in as much rebellion as I was, if I would have known taking my parents to court and get them sued for not allowing me to go through gender transition at a young age was an option, I would have taken it. That's in California, I believe. Yes. So in California also, uh, is working with the CPS to take away your kid. If you don't affirm them by their pronouns, that actually like that's a level of degeneracy and evil that I have never seen. You're basically, you basically legalize kidnapping people's children. Yeah. Yep. Yep. And, and, exactly. and so, so, so you want to tell me that you want to vote because by the way, uh, Kamala Harris's VP, Tim Walls, he's all about that. Mm-hmm. He loves that stuff. Like he was at the forefront of taking, you know, kids away from their parents, essentially, if they didn't want to affirm them by their pronouns. Yeah. So you're telling me as a Christian that you're okay with the ticket of people that support, the government kidnapping your children because you're teaching them biblical values, you need to repent. 
There's no such thing as a liberal Christian. Uh, and anyways, repentance is such a loving word, bro. We'll get into that. Like, I want to do a full circle of like this stuff. But again, my life's a living testimony. The importance of being raised on Christian values, you know, and yeah. we need to instill that back in this country. Yes. Um. And because, like I said, I would have taken the bait if I was raised in today's day and age, and that terrifies me. Like, that's like, dang. I wonder, like, like you were saying. Uh, we go through different demons and different struggles than our parents did, yeah. you know? And now the younger generation is going through that. Like, Satan doesn't even have to come through the portal of, or the door of, of, um, sexual abuse yeah. now it's encouraged to yes. start living the lgbtq life you know what i mean it's cool to do that um so we, we bring the, this country will be brought back to conservative christian values in Amen. jesus name but Amen. to circle all the way back because i don't want people to get so caught up in like like this isn't us saying like hey lgbtq right no, right we all, we bro. love them like we, i yes. you know whenever i look at somebody who's in that community i see them in the same lens that God sees them. Yeah. They're valuable, made in the image of God. Just because you're living a lifestyle that contradicts biblical values does not mean that I hate you. I love you. Yeah. Like, like truly. Yeah. I love you just like I love the straight person mm -hmm. that also doesn't know Jesus. Yeah. I love you just like, you know, the crackhead on the street mm -hmm. that doesn't know Jesus. You know, like, I, like my love for everybody is the same. The Bible says that God is no respecter of persons. Yeah. Like, I'm not going to look down on an individual because they're living this lifestyle of same-sex attraction. And then there's another individual who's heterosexual but also doesn't know Jesus. I love you both equally. Yep. I see the value that God sees in you. And if you ask me the truth, like, yeah, I'm going to tell you what the Bible yeah. says. But let me just show you how I love you with my actions, yes, not by yeah, what I'm exactly. what I'm thumping to yeah. you. Bible thumping is great, by the yeah. way. I'm a huge Bible thumper, in case you guys don't know by now, Same. my entire channel is preaching the Bible. <laughs> but like, you but know, it's because it's the goodness of God that brings people to Exactly. Repentance. People yeah. need it. Like you won't, you won't ever feel convicted if you never know what true love is. Yeah. And that's, I think that's well, what's really the damaging. It's going to sound like con condemnation. Condemnation, if you exactly. you don't see it through the lens of love. Exactly. And so that's like, I guess, kind of like full circle with all this. I want to encourage anybody who may be living in that lifestyle, who maybe also went through like sexual abuse as a kid and they're struggling with that shame, you know, because like I said, the enemy kept me bound for so many years of how could you have done that? You know what I mean? And like, that door ended up opening a door to so many other demons. Like, I always say, when you open a door to the demonic, you can't pick and choose what demons come right, in. Right, right, right. So, like, I started hearing all these voices of doing disgusting things, and yeah. I thought that that was me. Yeah. You know what I mean? And so I was living with so much shame, so much guilt of even the sin that I was living in. But, again, the Lord met me right where I was because – repentance doesn't mean now you have to be perfect and you know what I mean like or you right. have to get perfect before you come to the Lord it just means to turn around I was like I recognize I had the revelation of this sin this iniquity is doing nothing not nothing like it's actually making me worse you know yeah. what I mean yeah, yeah like yeah. it's doing absolutely nothing I'm still empty I still have this void and that's what every single person is searching for at the end of the day people in the LGBTQ people with gender confusion people um who are fornicating whatever it is mm -hmm. smoking drinking I never did that but like we're all searching for like you never smoked or drink no wow praise god <laughs> well because that's one thing i like i competed in a weightlifting oh that's so, right yeah. drinking kills your gains too yeah because i used to be around a bunch of like worldly bodybuilders and stuff right and they'd always be like we're only drinking once yeah. this weekend because our gains will go away right <laughs> well and honestly too like i feel led by the spirit to mention this me and my parents talk about this all the time my parents always told me three things growing up four things actually um don't have sex before marriage uh, don't drink, don't smoke, and don't get a tattoo. <laughs> so, and I don't, I've never drank, never smoked, never will. Yeah. Either of those two. Never got a tattoo, and I don't think I ever will just because, I don't know. What's you know, your opinion on Christians getting tattoos? I don't think it's a sin, but I, it's, I, like, if, I don't think I'll ever go in just because it was something I heard my parents say all the time growing yeah. up, but I always say this funny joke. I don't mean it, but it's like you don't put a bumper sticker on a, on a Ferrari. Uh, right, 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 <laughs> right. But anyways, like I, I, I mentioned this to say I didn't drink, I didn't smoke, I didn't get tattoos because I saw my parents living that out. Yeah. They didn't drink, they yeah. didn't smoke. My dad, like he had, he has like tattoos from like way back when. But yeah, like, yeah, yeah. But so let that be like an, a message to like kids who are growing up in today's day and age where parents maybe not feel like you know they don't know what to do or whatever you have to live out the gospel yeah you, there is a point where you you plant seeds of truth and everything but you can't give what you don't have at the end of the day you yeah. can't show them the goodness of god if you yourself don't even have a revelation exactly. of it you know what i mean so encouraging every every parent that is listening to this like 
grow in your own relationship with the Lord and he's going to give you the wisdom and the grace to be able to raise your kid up in a way that they won't ever depart from the faith. Yeah. You know, like, again, my parents weren't perfect, but they did a great job at, uh, or they did a good job at instilling faith, but where they lacked in, and I say this uh, not to dishonor my parents at all. We talk about this all the time. Right, right, thank right. God that we're at the point where we are right. all born again, all following amen, Jesus. Amen, Praise amen. God. But, um, but they recognize that they weren't living it out. You, you know, yeah. you can't just tell a kid, don't do this, don't do this because, it's actually in our kind of human nature to do what we're doing. Right, right, to do. right. You know what I mean? Right. Like, but now, it's the fall now, of man. Yeah. Well, even now, it's in a holy way. We're like, yeah. Culture's telling me not to do this. Right, right, right. Well, right. I'm gonna do what my God right, tells right, me to right, do. Right. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's kind of funny because it's like back then, being a, being a rebel would be like, and obviously, I'm not like encouraging rebellious <laughs> behavior. You know, God wants us yeah. to, to be submissive to yeah. authority and everything, but like. But it's we're kind of funny. Rebellious against the demonic. Rebellious agendas. against the demonic uh, things, you know. And but back then, back then, being a rebel was like smoking, drinking, right. sleeping, like outside of marriage. Now, being a rebel is like following Jesus, You're being right. filled with the Spirit of God, like resisting sin, because it's like basically so normal now. Yeah. That is You're like, oh, you don't do that. It's like, yeah, I don't. Like, oh, gosh, yeah. what's wrong with this? And guy? it's actually <laughs> so cool. Like, I, I don't know. I, I, I like being born in this in this generation. Yes. Because, like, now being sanctified, holy, and blameless is, like, seen yes. as, like, a, a what the heck yeah, is he yeah. doing? And I thank God that, like, we're, I believe this is also a generation where we're breaking out of religion. You know what yeah. I mean? We're, we're getting away from the mindset of, like, it's our works that saves us. Like, yes. where we're talking about everything flows from love. Uh, love, obviously, works is good. Faith without works is dead. Right. But those works flow from a position of knowing who I am in the Lord, knowing that yeah. I've received sonship or, you know, being a daughter from the Lord, you know? Yeah. Um, but I think feel like we're also stepping in a generation where we have the revelation of the Lord created my personality for a reason. You right, know what I mean? Right, like right. I mentioned earlier, I'm not exactly the typical feminine Christian, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, as yeah. far as looks, but like this is a personality that the Lord's given me, you know what I mean? And it reaches millions of souls because right. it looks different, you know? Right. So I feel like people are stepping more into like the fun and the joy that comes with walking with the Lord, but yeah. that still is walking in holiness and righteousness. Right. But again, all that's rooted with like, like John 15 says, like abiding, staying connected to the true vine. It's yes. all about relationship, bro. Yes. It's crazy. Cause again, I grew up in a, like a religious church where it's like hell, fire, brimstone. There's a place to preach hell. Yeah. Jesus talked a Absolutely. lot about hell. A lot, you know yeah. what I mean. We have to know what is sin. We have to know what you know what what is acceptable in the sight of the Lord. But we, again, we can't behavior modify any of that stuff. Right, Growing right. that relationship, and and man, it's just it's so fun walking with the Lord, man. Amen. I crack up going because I go to ministry school now. For yeah. the, the people that don't know, like, um, I go to Lifestyle Christian University now. Yeah. Dude, I'd be blasting Christian rap, Afterthoughts on, music on the way on, there, praying in tongues, absolutely on fire, bro. And I crack up because I'm like, man, two years ago, dude, three years ago, I would have thought I was a dork for this. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. But now I know that I'm truly living out, like, the best life that I possibly can. You right, know what I mean? right, well, right. Well, actually, this isn't even compared to where I'm going to be in like right, a few right. years. You know Amen. what I mean? But, dude, it, it's, it's so fun being a Christian. And I remember believing that lie. Uh, which is why I would say like, oh, I'll wait to get right with God in the future because yeah. I thought you couldn't have fun as a Christian. It's right, like, right, no, right, right. You're gonna have the most fun, you know, and it's gonna be in a clean, holy way, and um, you get to embrace your personality. You know what I mean? Right. And, and be who God's called you to be. Which, yeah, dude, it's just it's just powerful. That's such an agenda of the devil too. Like, oh, following God means you can't have fun anymore. Yeah. What's fun about being hungover and then throwing up the next morning? What's fun about making a bunch of soul ties with Jezebel's? Sorry, what's fun mic. no you're good what's fun about fornicating and then being worried that you're pregnant every month which right. is what i lived out right you, you know there's nothing fun week. about that all that does is like produce fear yep. fear depression but perfect love casts cast out, out all fear. fear come on it's love bro oh <laughs> we get into that scripture today see that's why i like doing these podcasts man you know what i'm saying we ain't just talking about stuff we we direct you back truth. to the word of god sword, come on. Bro. because our opinions don't matter at the end of the day right right like <laughs> They, they don't. really don't. Like, you know, if your opinion contradicts the word of God, like, you know, free free speech. But yeah. that doesn't mean that I got to submit to that. You know, yeah, like exactly. I submit to the word of God. I submit to, you know, it's it's a manual for my life. I'm not going to like every part of the manual counts. I'm not going to pick and choose what I like and what I don't like. Yeah, because it's all for our benefit at the end of the day. Yeah. Like Jeremiah 29, 11 says that he has plans for us to prosper He's a good dad, like yeah, we've been yeah. saying. He wants us to do well in every aspect. But he's the one who created us. Like you don't the clay doesn't look at the potter to tell itself or tell them what the clay is made out of. The potter right. knows what the clay is made out of. Right. You know? So like 
God knows exactly who who we are. He created us. He fashioned us. He knew us before we even formed in our mother's womb, and he yep. was so intentional behind it. Like, we have to trust and submit and have faith in who he has called us to be and said that we are. And that's that's the whole, like, arg- arg- or argument or, I guess, uh, thing about this whole whatever demonic agenda you want to talk about, LGBTQ, fornication, lukewarm Christians, is we're just not believing who God has said, said, uh, said we are. We have so much pride, and we think that we know who we truly are, when in yeah. reality, the creator of knows the creation right 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 and it's about submitting to that humbling ourselves before the lord recognizing oh lord i don't know anything you know what i mean it's you that's actually the like the bible says that the fear of the lord is the beginning of wisdom and i would even say that knowing nothing is the beginning of wisdom as well like wow god i Mm because when i got saved i learned so much that i realized i knew nothing Mm -hmm. i'm like oh my gosh the more that i learn i realize how like grand and infinite and vast he is and i'm like holy crap thank yeah. god i don't hold the world in my hands for real, it for broken real. Already. <laughs> i can do all that yeah seriously. i can make the world in six <sighs> or seven days these new agers are trying to tell you you are gods and stuff nah bro i don't got i don't got the sauce like that to, right? to create something yeah. in seven days i can barely even put together a puzzle right <laughs> no that's crazy what you mean i'm a god huh like nah bro i don't even remember what i ate for breakfast a oh couple days ago gosh. actually i probably do i eat probably meat. steak yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i'm always posting steak on my instagram stories i'll plug my instagram Jeez, since you guys are asking out, no one's asking i'm just promoting myself it's real big nick <laughs> uh, but um that's nick spelled with a k not a ck just in case oh you're gonna gosh. go on there right now but yeah i uh it's really powerful you know just this revelation that you're sharing with us about identity because that's the most important part is who am i in jesus christ not oh i gotta stop living this way because the bible says so who am i as a son and daughter of the most high king Mm -hmm. and when you catch that revelation abiding by his word being free from sin it doesn't feel like a chore it doesn't feel like a uh he Just, says, he says, my commandments aren't burdensome yep. because they're not like when you're walking in love, bro, it's the natural byproduct. Obedience is a natural byproduct. Yeah. The first fruit of the spirit, self-control, you know what yep, I mean? Yep. So no matter what entices I might feel, desires that I might feel, it's like, nah, I've tasted and seen that the Lord is good, come good. On, you know what I mean? And that's all I want, you know? Yeah. Um. And so again, like bringing things back around full circle, like. I, I say that's like a word of encouragement to anybody who may be listening to this. I know there is, but like LGBTQ people, you know, gender confusion, whatever it is, like uh, stuff you went, uh, you know, child, uh, what was it? Abuse. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. In the past, whatever it is, fornication. If you're lukewarm right now, yeah. praise God you're here, first of all. This Amen. isn't by accident. There's no coincidences when it comes to the kingdom of God. This Amen. pulled up on your algorithm and you stayed here. You listen to us yap. You're not making it. Like, yeah, right. Uh, Comment down below, reason. by the way, if. If that demographic she just mentioned is yeah. you and you watched it all the way, because if you watch it all the way, praise God, God's yeah. tugging on your it's heart It's for right a now. reason. And so, like, I, I say this as a word of encouragement of, one, I repent on behalf of anybody in the church or Christians that may have came in the name of God but made you feel uh, shame or made you think that you have to get clean before you come to the Lord. Right. I'm here to tell you, like, the reality is he's the shower. You have to step into the shower. You don't clean yourself before you get in the shower. You know what I mean? But part, this is something that the Lord spoke to me early on in my walk, is part of before stepping in the shower is is you don't step in fully clothed. Right. You strip. You know what I mean? Colossians talks about putting off the ways of the old man and putting on on righteousness. You know, 1 Corinthians 5.21 says that he who knew no sin became sin so that we may put on the righteousness of God. Yes. I want you guys to picture, like, no matter what lifestyle you're living in, Jesus in front of you, bro, and he's holding a robe of righteousness, and he's just asking you, my son and daughter, come home. I'm I'm ready to clothe you. This is what the parable of the prodigal son is about. Yeah, yeah. He, when his son came home, realized that that he knew nothing, and he realized he needed his dad. Right. His dad celebrated, and he clothed him in a new robe. And so that's what Jesus is doing. Like that's what he was doing to me. That's what he's doing with you guys right now. He's just holding a a, a, a robe of righteousness, and he's like, if you would just put off the things that you know aren't truly fulfilling you, you know the LGBTQ, the whatever it is, like um fornication drinking smoking sports athletes good yeah, like right right it's not fulfilling you it's leaving you more broken come to me all who are burdened and heavy laden mm. and let me give you rest yes and he just wants to clothe you with that robe and 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 really what the what the walk of of a christian is uh as second timothy says it's the fight of faith you know so it's like yeah. fighting the fight of faith where even when the enemy throws these arrows at you of oh you're 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 um but 
you're too bad, like you did all of this, da da da. When he tries to remind you of his of your past, remind him that his future is burning in the pits of hell. Right, you know right, what I mean? But right. like, but like when he tries throwing those things, you have to have faith in who God deems you as. Colossians says that He's deemed us as holy, blameless, and righteous. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I'm not gonna let worldly wisdom, demonic wisdom, to tear me away from the Lord. You know right, what I mean? Right, right. If I fall, I'm going to get back up. A righteous man yep. falls seven times, but he gets back up. Yep, and I'm yep. going to continue to fight the fight of faith and one that faith that, that God loves me, that I'm chosen, that he's been with me, that he'll never forsake me, that that he has great plans for me to prosper, not to harm for me, yeah. that he loves me, he has my best interests, and I'm righteous because of what Jesus did, because of the finished work of the cross, not because of what I'm doing. And so a man thinketh, if you truly know and exactly. believe that you're righteous, so a man thinketh, so he shall be. And yeah. then you're going to start living out holiness because Romans says that the, the fruit of righteousness is holiness. Again, it's not about behavior modification. It's about growing in that relationship with the Lord. So I repent on behalf of anybody in the church or Christians that have may um, misrepresented the Lord and, and anybody watching this life incorrectly made you think that you have to get clean before you come to the Lord. Just come to the Lord. I didn't come to the Lord with agenda. I said, Lord, I need you. And he washed me, bro. He washed my conscience. Wow. Wow. He washed, like Hebrews talks about, the blood of Jesus washes our conscience clean. So yeah. that now we're not a subject to shame. Romans 8, 1 says we're no no longer, uh, condemnations are on our portion anymore. Yeah, yeah. Um, my well, cl conscience was clean, and now I have the ability to just truly pursue after the Lord. And I have the perspective, like I was mentioning earlier, to recognize that, like, hey, the Lord's good. You know what amen, I mean? And amen. even though I feel these desires, I'm not going to identify with them. Exactly. And, <laughs> you know, just again. when you get saved, too, like, it's not like desires are going to go yeah. away. Like, I still, I've been dealing with desires for f almost five years, maybe four and a mm -hmm. half years since I came to Christ. And guess what? I don't submit to it any time. Yeah. You know, I it's, it's there. And, you know, maybe it's the flesh, maybe it's demons. Mm -hmm. But... It's not like you get some magic wand that when you come to Christ, everything just goes away. It's like, no, but we know we have yeah. the weapons now. We know how to fight yeah. against it. Like, I know how to block that dart. Yep. I got my shield. And I got we, I got my yeah. Bible, which is my blick in the spirit. Bible you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so it's just about being aware of the war that we're in and knowing that the weapons of our warfare, are not corny. it is the word of God. Notice how all she did when talking about you know, knowing God's plans for her was bringing up scripture because yeah. scripture overrides your emotions, mm -hmm. her emotions, my emotions, because uh, your our emotions are always changing. We're it, it's they're unstable. You know, we need the word of God to give us that stability. Yeah, and That's I just so want to thank you so family. much, like for you know being vulnerable and sharing all of these things because you know this is very raw. This is yeah. very authentic. You, I also noticed you made a YouTube channel as well. Is that yeah. right? Yeah, the Lord's been tugging on my heart for like months about that. And Have finally, you posted yet? Yeah, so I I believe the literally the video I posted. I believe that's why He started giving you those visions, bro. Because He was like, I need you to take this step of obedience, and then I'm wow. gonna start opening these doors. Wow. So yeah, praise God. For those of you who don't know, like I, I preach the gospel online on Instagram. I mentioned I compete in the sport of Olympic weightlifting. So, um, the Lord will speak to us. He's so kind and so cool. He'll speak to us in a way that under that makes sense to us. I'm a meathead. He speaks to me in gym and weightlifting. Amen, so, amen. so that's what kind of started my ministry on there is like I was uh, basically speaking in par parables of like gym or whatever. Um, yeah. And so I'm kind of replicating that same thing to YouTube and really just going into uh, like I'll, I'll – more stuff going deeper in my testimony, lessons yeah. I've learned throughout my life, you know, more revelations on identity with the Lord, you know, right. really just like kind of like discipleship on YouTube. So I guess like if people are interested in that, shameless plug. No, <laughs> for, I brought it up so you yeah, can yeah. plug it. Yeah, Ain't yeah. no shame in that. <laughs> Everyone go check out her um, YouTube channel. I'm going to put it in the description. You guys can check it out. As you guys know, I don't really do that many collabs on my YouTube channel because collabs is like more than just making content. It's yeah. a cosign in the spirit. Yeah. And like the fruit of her life is evident. I, you know, I know Mallory personally and just the stuff that she's preaching online. It's sound doctrine. A lot of people can kind of get carried off in these extremes of like either hyper grace yeah. or hyper religion. Yeah. But you're right in that in that balance that we're actually called to be yeah. in and like you know there's people that uh, you're never going to agree with someone 100 percent on anything not that i disagree with yeah. you on anything you know, but uh yeah <laughs> don't don't get mad no, I'm just no, no, no. but like you know when i watch her content like every time i watch it i'm like amen that's actually sound doctrine so you know like it's 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 very awesome to have yeah. you on here and definitely support her in her ministry. You know, she's reaching a lot of people. She's able to reach people in demographics that I can't even reach. And that's the beauty of the body of Christ is we all have different functions. Right. Some the hands, some the feet, but it's all like, 
it's all for profitable use to edify, you know, the church of God. So um, is there anything else that you would want to mention before we wrap up? Yeah, just to wrap up, like um, some of like my testimony parts may have seemed like it was like, well, why'd you talk about that? Uh, yeah. The fact that I could talk about the stuff that I went through as a kid and yeah. like the things that I did, even while labeling myself a Christian, but living a lukewarm lifestyle, like the fact that I can talk about it confidently is evidence that I've been completely set free from the shame and guilt of it. Right, right, So, right. like, I I hope people can hear this and, like, be encouraged and maybe challenged of, like, oh, these things I've been keeping in the dark that I've been so ashamed of that I feel like I – some because some people struggle with they can't even have intimacy with the Lord because they're still str- carrying shame from things that they did in their childhood. Mm. Um, so I hope you guys are encouraged with this to open up to a friend, open up to a family member, your parents, bro – the parents is the hardest one, but like, it's so freeing. We need to put everything out in, in the light. I mentioned first John one seven earlier. Um, when we walk in the light as he walks in the light, you know what I mean? Not letting anything fester in the dark. That's where we can actually grow in intimacy with the Lord. Um, but yeah, just there's no sh- okay, condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. The second part of that verse who are led by the spirit. There's Amen. A, there's an add to that. Yes. You know what I mean? So like yes. the, you got to be led by the spirit. You know what I mean? Yes. That comes with like you're mentioning being, being a student of the word. Um, the, like I know scripture because like I said, I tasted and seen that the Lord was good. And I'm Amen. like, this Bible, they forced me to read it as a kid, but this is some good Amen. stuff. You Amen. Know? Amen. So I, I'm in it now. Like I, I'm, I'm with the Lord, not in a religious practice. Like I'd be going on dates with Jesus. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Amen. Um, and just like being still with him. There's a Psalms that talks about being still and knowing that he's God. I don't, I don't search out for these crazy encounters. I yeah, just, yeah, yeah. I know. And I, you know, uh, that he's good and that he's with me, but, uh, right. yeah, that'd be it. I guess I do want to add to though. Uh, we've talked about it, but I want to encourage people who may think that their testimony isn't doing anything. If they feel led, not even on a social media, uh, aspect, but like, um, on an every day, um, my life is actually, uh, fruit, of Big Nick's ministry. That's crazy when I heard that in the beginning. Yeah, you could continue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was so happy when I heard this. Yeah, so like this is so for, full circle, bro, because when I was lukewarm living in North Carolina, I was fornicating, bro. Like, you, I, I used to watch you on David Dobrik vlogs. Mm-hmm. So like I knew, you know, the, the iniquity that you were living in. Yeah, I knew yeah. you didn't know the Lord. I knew you were in Hinduism or whatever. Yeah, yeah. But then during COVID, I see you start posting videos about the gospel. Yeah. And looking back, I was definitely manifesting. Like, <laughs> like, <laughs> I was getting convicted because I'm pretty sure I was filled with the Holy Spirit. Like, um, I was getting convicted. I, I was I was getting angry because, like, you didn't know the Lord. Yeah. And then I see this radical transformation, you preaching the gospel online, which I knew I'd always been called to some sort of, like, doing something big for the kingdom. I knew yeah. that at five years old. I didn't know what it looked like. But I remember seeing my uncle preach on stage, and I was like, I'm called to something big. You know? Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. But, uh, but yeah, I saw you, bro. I got so mad I deleted uh, TikTok. <laughs> I was so mad. But, like, let this be a word of encouragement. Like, especially with social media, we don't see the fruit right away. Even on day-to-day evangelism, when I'm preaching at somebody who ends up cussing me out like they did the other day. Yeah. You know, like, that doesn't look like that. It wasn't very fruitful. Right, right. But I have the faith that a year down, they're actually going to be a minister of the gospel. You know right, what I mean? Right, Same thing. You didn't know. You said this. You didn't know what your testimony was doing behind closed doors. I didn't. But, like, it planted a seed in my heart, and I remember, like, a little bit more of the fear of the Lord was instilled in me that day of, like, wow, wow like, the remnant is coming up. Yeah. Like, I, I you know, so it, it wow, yeah. Wow, wow. That's so I just want to honor you in that, bro. Thank like, you Thank so you for much. your ministry, and thank you, like, we've talked about this, but I don't think people fully recognize like the sacrifice that you made you know obviously the lord like uh he desires mercy not sacrifice but yeah. you laid it all out bro and Amen. like i honor you for that and i i thank you it's thank super you. super encouraging um uh to me and i know to a lot of people um and i know this video is gonna reach a lot of people you know just from the wisdom we spit out right and i guess i'll leave it with Trump 2024 <laughs> <laughs> i love how you that's the conclusion to everything Trump 2024 <laughs> No, thank you so much for that. I really appreciate oh, it. Bro, sorry. Uh, that's actually hilarious, bro. I mean, bro. so for real. Like, get Amen. registered for voting. Amen. Like, Amen. vote. Because, again, hear, hear my voice by the sound of the Lord. Like, if you don't vote, you're signing off on the demonic agenda that's going to be pushed if the other person comes in, in, into into leadership. So Absolutely. We're cooked if Kamala wins. <laughs> Uh, but no, I thank you so much I'm for not your good. Gen Z language cracks <laughs> yeah, <you> right. up, <laughs> bro. <laughs> now we are completely cooked as a nation if she does. But um, no, thank you so much for that. You know, when I, you know, to to wrap things up, it's funny. I was like wrapping things <laughs> yeah, up, and now yeah. I'm back in the combo. This is God. God's like, nah, don't <laughs> wrap know, it up yet. But uh, you know, like when I 
like essentially sacrifice everything. Like I had no other choice. I'm so in love with God. Yes. You know, the Bible says that God is literally our husband. Yes. And like, I'm not saying that in like a sus way. Like God really is my <laughs> husband. Okay. I know we just talked about the whole community and stuff. Like I'm, no, I like women, bride. but God, and the Bible says God's my husband. Like I'm married yeah. to God. So if I'm married to somebody that I'm deeply and madly in love with, I'm going to do everything yes. I can. Like, to make sure that they're pleased with yeah. me because I love yep. them. Like yeah. when I had to give up these things, when I had to give up, you know, working with demonic companies that were putting a lot of money in my pocket, when I had to sacrifice relationships, when I left the industry completely and I started my career from the ground up, mm -hmm. I started from scratch, yeah. uh, which is scary because I worked 10 years or like nine, eight to nine years to build yeah. a legacy, and now I'm tearing it all down. Yeah. Even in the beginning, like, my mom is like, what are you doing? But now she calls me, and she's like, Nick Hill, that's my full name, by the way. The only reason I haven't changed my channel name to Nick Hill Kiswani is because I can't get the username on Instagram, but my <laughs> name is Nick Hill Kiswani. She's like, she's like, Nick Hill, at first, I didn't know why you, like, started everything all over again. Mm. I thought you were crazy, but now I see it, yeah. and it's just a testament to her of, like, God's faithfulness. Dude, that's so good. One of uh, Todd White, the the man that uh, is, like, the owner of the, um, or man of God, I should say, is the owner of LCU, he says all the time, like, don't be so obsessed with trying to sell your fruit with other people. Let it hang. Just yes. produce so much fruit that people can see it, you know? Wow. And so, again, like, your life right now, your ministry is such an encouragement because the word of God is true. It says, like, whatever we give to the Lord, he's going to bring back 10, 100 fold, you know? Yeah. And you're living that out. He did that. Yeah. Now, I'm in a better position now than I ever was in the world yeah. in every aspect possible. Yeah. Like, provision-wise, emotionally, yeah. spiritually. Like, I'm on cloud nine with mm -hmm. Jesus. And that's where, that's the deception of the devil is, like, you know, the devil loves to give you this uh, half version of the book of Job where you'll lose everything, but not that you'll gain everything back when it's over. And you will. That's good. And I never went into this thinking I was going to get anything. I was ready to lose it all. Yeah. I was ready to, like, you know, essentially go broke for well, preaching the gospel. Because the reality is, too, Jesus is the prize. That's the book of Hebrews exactly. says the, the, he, he, he rewards those who diligently seek him. Yes. That's not seeking after followers you know like i have people asking me for like the instagram how did you make things pop off and yeah, i'm like yeah one i didn't want it that's a lot of eyes on me but right, like right, praise right. god now but like right. but i just sought the lord i yeah. love him bro and like i want to get as close as i possibly can to hand him as i can that's what the fear of the lord is it's not being afraid of him it's being absolutely terrified of being away from him because yes. i recognize that all good things come from him you know yes. i tried living life apart from him it was a disaster. Like, you know what I mean? By his mercy and his grace, I didn't like off myself and right, stuff. Right, right. But, um, but yeah, the Lord is just so good. Um, yeah, dude, I it's feel amazing. like you can end it on that. <laughs> Amen. Do you want to pray us out before we end the stream or the podcast? Yeah. It's not a stream. It's not stream. A live stream. Forgive me guys for not getting yeah. my terminology right before we end this podcast that right. I'm going to edit. That's not live. Right. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Yeah, I would Amen. love to pray. Okay. Ooh. Jesus, 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 Jesus. I just thank you so much for this opportunity, Lord. I thank you for this uh, divine encounter, Lord. I thank you for every person that clicked on this video to watch and has stayed to the end, Lord. I thank you uh, for opening their hearts, God, opening their eyes to the truth of your word, God, that is not condemning, God, but it, it's so good, God. It's your goodness that brings us to repentance, Lord. So I lift up every soul that is listening to this that can relate to any part of my testimony, or maybe there was just something that we talked about, even in the political area, that, that convicted their their heart or touch their heart lord i pray that you would give them a greater reality and a greater uh, revelation of your love father so that they can grow in deeper levels of intimacy with you lord um i just thank you so much lord for the seeds that were planted god and and i thank you that you're faithful and your word is true your word says that your word will never return void um so i pray that you would stir up um a a, a faith in the parents of kids that that the parents of, that may have kids like myself who was a black sheep that was like a problem kid uh you know the the, the issues I put my parents through bro I pray that you would just uh encourage them God to be able to continue to fight the fight of faith Lord um and just c continue to to follow your word even when it doesn't make sense Lord I thank you so much Lord and is in your name we pray amen we want to thank you guys so much for watching today's podcast if you guys want to support this ministry, what I'm doing, you can partner with me monthly. The giving link is in the description, or you can do a one-time donation, which is also linked in the description at the end of the day to make videos like this. Shocker alert, it cost me money. But <laughs> so if you want to sew into what God is doing, um, you know, that's appreciated. 
I also have merchandise as well. If you want to get something in return for sewing, you will get something in return from the father Amen. if you do. But if you want something now, you know, because I know people want their stuff now, <laughs> you can also buy a merch that I drop, which is also linked in the description. And it's made by me. So it's all Holy Spirit inspired. It's Amen. So uh, with that being said, I love you guys so much. I'll see you guys very soon for another video. May God bless all of you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ and peace out.